Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, the current processor landscape is pretty much uh, well established. We've got the Snapdragon 855, which we're seeing in phones like the Galaxy S10 and also in other devices. We've got the Exynos 9820 from Samsung, which we're seeing in some models of the S10. We've got the Kirin 980, which we're seeing in kind of the Huawei phones, like the new Huawei P30 that's been launched. Of course, Apple have got the, uh, the Apple A12 processor, which we just saw in the last iPhones that were launched. Kind of MediaTek are still doing what they're doing kind of towards the mid range. Uh, so things are pretty much established at the moment. But there are new processors coming. There are new CPU designs coming. There are new GPU designs coming. And then of course, after that, there are new phones coming that will use all those processors. So what's coming next? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, if you look back over the last few years, every kind of May, June timeframe, uh, ARM will announce a new CPU design and probably a new GPU design. So for example, May, June last year, we got the Cortex A76 and we got the new Mali G76. The year before that, we got the uh, kind of the Cortex A75 with the Mali G72. And the year before that, we got the uh, Cortex A73 with the Mali G71. So this year, if ARM follow the same pattern, around the May, June timeframe, we're gonna get the next uh, CPU and GPU design. Now on the CPU side, uh, ARM have done an unusual thing and they have published a kind of a roadmap with some project names in them. So we know the next ARM processor is co codenamed uh, Demos. And we know that they're looking at a performance uplift in the uh, double figures. We don't know what it will be called, but let's just take a stab that it might be called the Cortex A77. So we've had the uh, 73 and then the 75 and the 76 and now the 77. It's just a guess that really is up to their marketing team. But of course, we know it is Project uh, Demos. Now, also on the GPU side, we had the uh, Mali G71, the G72, and now then the uh, G76 to bring the CPU and the GPU into the same naming. So if there's a new GPU, it could be the G77. Now the GPU is quite interesting because uh, ARM reinvent their GPU architecture every few years. Now they have project name, code names based on Norse mythology because the GPU design team is actually out of Denmark. So we had Utgard, then we had Midgard, and now the current G71, the G72 and the G76 are based on Bifrost. Now that's three years we've had Bifrost GPU. So the question is, is this year, are we going to see a new GPU architecture and then a new GPU? Or are we gonna get one more year out of Bifrost with maybe some tweaks and performance uplift that they've been able to achieve? We don't know. We'll find out uh, later in the year if ARM follow the same pattern. But assuming we get the Cortex A77 and the Mali G77, then what happens is companies like Huawei and Qualcomm and Samsung take those designs and turn them into the processors that we'll then use in the phones uh, kind of in 2020, in 2020. So let's start with the biggest name, of course, which is Qualcomm. So this year, we've got the, core, the uh, Snapdragon 855. And so next, we're gonna get, let's say, the Snapdragon 865. Now, the 865 will have this new uh, Cortex uh, A77 processor in it, but Qualcomm have a special license with ARM where they're allowed to semi-customize the cores. And this is called the built-on Cortex technology uh, license. So it allows them to take the Cortex A77 and then tweak it slightly. Not uh, like 50% redesign, but maybe a 5% tweaks. Things like the depth of the instruction window, how far the processor looks ahead when it wants to kind of see whether it could branch uh, in one direction or another. These things can be tweaked inside the design. So Qualcomm will tweak that and then they will produce the, the uh, Snapdragon uh, 865. Now last year they had this one plus three plus four set up, which was one cryo processor based on the Cortex 876 with lots of cache and a higher frequency. Then three other cores also based on the Cortex A76, but with less cache and a slightly lower frequency. And then four Cortex A55 cores. Now they could follow exactly that same model, for the uh, Snapdragon 865. We'll have to see when it comes out. There are other variations that you could play with. 
But also what's interesting with the Snapdragon, of course, is that they don't use the Mali GPUs, they use their own Adreno GPU. Now in the Snapdragon 855, we've got the Adreno 640. In the Snapdragon 845, we had the Adreno 630. And then when you go back one more generation, we had the Adreno 500 series. So it looks like that Qualcomm follow a two year cycle for designing their GPUs. So I don't think we get the Adreno 670 or the Adreno 665 or something. What we're gonna get is an Adreno 730, which will be a new GPU, uh, a new GPU design, and then a new GPU that will go in the Snapdragon uh, 865. And of course, the next big name is uh, Samsung. We had the Exynos 9810, then we had the Exynos 9820. So next, of course, we're expecting to see the 9830. Now, there may be a 9825, which could be a tweaked version of the 9820, which we'll see in the Note 10. There are some rumors around that, but only Samsung know at this moment. We'll see when the uh, processor and the product is launched. But for next year, we're looking at the 9830. Now, Samsung do the CPU part differently in their process because they have their own ARM compatible uh, custom core design called Mongoose. So we had the original Mongoose and we had the M2, Mongoose 2, M3, and the M4 we saw now in the 9820. So we're expecting there to be a Mongoose 5, the M5 core that we'll see in the 9830. However, it seems that the Mongoose is a fairly kind of power hungry CPU. So this year what they did was they combined two Mongoose M4 cores with two Cortex A75 cores. And then along with that, four Cortex A55 cores. Now, a lot of people have been confused. Why are they using A75 rather than A76, which is what everyone else like uh, Qualcomm and Huawei have been doing. And the reason for that is this, is that the A55 and the A75 use dynamic. And that's this uh, cluster configuration technology from ARM that allows you to put eight cores in a single cluster. Now, previously, uh, they didn't support dynamic and, and ARM don't sell dynamic as a separate thing. You either buy their cores and you kind of get the plumbing that is dynamic on its own, or in Samsung's case, they had to design their own interface that was compatible. So this year, although they've got two uh, M4 cores and then two Cortex A55 cores and then four Cortex A55 cores, they're all in the same cluster. But to do that, Samsung had to design their own dynamic interconnect. And that's why they stuck with the A75 and the A55, because that is obviously a big project. And they had to set down some fixed points, the requirements, this is what we're gonna do, and it will take this amount of time and we can't change things mid path. But now that they've done that, maybe when it comes to the 9830, what we're actually gonna see is two Cortex M5 cores and then two Cortex A77 cores and then two Cortex A55 cores. Now on the GPU front, Samsung have been using the Mali GPUs for several years. Now, in fact, they have a long-term contract with ARM and there is some questions about whether the 9830 is gonna use the Mali G77, if that's what it's called, or whether Samsung will design their own GPU. Now, designing their own GPU is obviously a long-term project. It's gonna take several years, three, possibly uh, two years to do that. And there have been rumors that Samsung are employing GPU designers. My feeling is that for this year, for the 9830, we're still going to see the Mali GPU in there. And maybe there is some discussions going on in the background about kind of ensuring a performance uplift. Maybe if there is a new architecture after Bifrost, maybe now that's gonna guarantee a kind of, a, 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 you know, a new settlement with Samsung. Maybe Samsung will switch, we don't know. My prediction for the 9830 is it will still have the Mali GPU, it'll have the M5 core and it'll have the Cortex A77, again, if that's what it's called. And then we've got Huawei, of course, who have their Kirin line of processors, the Kirin 970, the Kirin 980, and they really are a mainstream consumer of ARM designs. So my prediction is for the Kirin 990, what we're gonna get is four Cortex A77 cores, we're gonna get four Cortex A55 cores, and then we're gonna get a Mali G77 GPU. Now, of course, this year they went with a two plus two plus four setup, so there are two higher clock frequencies Cortex A76, then two lower clock frequencies uh, A76, and then the four Cortex uh, A55. My prediction is that for the 990, they're gonna go like Qualcomm, they're gonna go with one, three, four. So we're gonna get one core that's got a higher frequency and lots of cache on it, then three lower frequency Cortex A77 cores, and then we're gonna get the four Cortex A55 cores, and then we're probably gonna get uh, a, a G77 uh, GPU, as I mentioned. Now, one thing to say, all these chips will be built on seven nanometer. 
okay, including the Exynos 9830, everything's gonna be on seven nanometer. Five nanometer isn't here yet, so everyone's gonna be sticking on seven nanometer for these new processors. And quickly in closing, we'll just mention uh, MediaTek. Their best uh, chip at the moment has got the Cortex A75 in it. So maybe this next bunch of chips will maybe progress to the A76. I wouldn't expect to see a design from them with the Cortex A77. Uh, and the GPU, well, sometimes they use Mali, sometimes they use the Power VR GPU from Imagination, and they seem to be switching like that. You really can't tell which way they're going to go. So we'll see what the next chips are. It could be Power VR, could be Mali. They're making decisions somewhere at a boardroom level that we just don't know. But we'll see what happens. And then, of course, we've got Apple. We just had the uh, uh, Apple A12 processor in the new iPhones. That was a hexa-core setup with two high-performance cores and four. Uh, energy efficient cores. We had the uh, A12X, which of course went to an octa-core design. So the big question is, will the A13 be an octa-core design or will they stick at a hexa-core design? I'm gonna go with an octa-core design, four high performance cores, four uh, energy efficiency cores, and then the latest version of their kind of GPU, which they've been moving away from the imagination power VR. There's obviously, I think there's some stuff going on there with architectural licensing but really every generation they're moving further and further away to making it their own custom, completely custom designed uh, GPU. So there you go. So next year, Snapdragon 865, uh, the Kirin uh, 990, the Exynos 9830, something from Helios, which is probably gonna be one generation behind everybody else, and of course the Apple A13 processor. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and well, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.